I am back from visiting North Dakota where I was able to see the campsites where the water protectors are gathering to resist the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. And um, I can't really say what I expected to see or what I was expecting to feel when I got there, but uh, the experience was truly amazing. And I do advise anybody that can make it there to please go. Uh, there's tons to do. Uh, there's many, many people there. Uh, you know, a lot of people have sold their homes even to get there and just be there. The people have been there for months. There's uh, tons of uh, tents and teepees there. Uh, it's way more organized than I think I could have ever imagined. Um, they have uh, a ton of supplies on, on hand. Uh, there's uh, a ton of kitchens for, you know, to feed everybody that's there. Uh, people are sending supplies from all across the country. Um, and outside of that, the the scenery there is beautiful. Um, just to see the river from, from different angles and the sun and the moon uh, is, is just truly an experience. And I do have to thank Marco. Marco was um, sort of my tour guide. You know, he, he um, and not just to give me a layout of the land, but but to uh, give me more perspective, some more insight and in what's going on and, and what is happening to the Native American people. Um, so I really, really appreciate him giving me that education. Um, also, I want to thank uh, Amy Rosenthal um, for being that she was there in Standard Rock as well. And I was a man short, you know, we were only half of the team uh, in North Dakota. So her involvement was so important. And um, I don't think I could have gotten through it without her help. So thank you very much, Amy. Um, but like I said, um, it was it was truly an event. And the people there are are, are standing hand in hand, you know, the it, it's solidarity and the land the water the environment is as much a part of them as is their heart as is their soul so this isn't just like simply them just losing some assets like if they were just to lose a house or something like that or just something that has a monetary value no it's it's much much deeper than that and by hearing different accounts, I was able to grasp that more so than when I didn't, or, you know, more so than before I had actually visited and spoke with people. Um, so what I thought was interesting as well was, you know, we talked to some people that were locals um, around town, around Bismarck. And what was interesting is that neither they nor anybody that they knew that knew some other people nobody seemed to know who was actually involved in the construction of the pipeline which i just thought was kind of weird um so it seems as though this is not a, a local um thing that's happening you know the it, it seems as though it's an outside pro, you know project um they're bringing outsiders in to complete this uh pipeline um I think some of the locals are a little perturbed with the, you know, the protest that they call it around Bismarck because it's, um, you know, uh, shutting down, you know, um, roads, you know, so that it makes it a little harder for them to get to work or get to home. And I kind of understand where they're coming from, but then you have to understand the other way as well. <laughs> attention needs to be drawn to this issue uh the construction of the pipeline should not go through it is it's, it's that simple and so when you have when you're standing on that side you have to create awareness you have to get people's attentions um and from what I've seen, the corporate media outlets are not giving this the attention it deserves. And when they do give it some attention, it's the wrong kind of attention. Um, they're not really there 
or, or when they uh, broadcast on it, it's not really to highlight the injustice. It's not to highlight the the potential dangers of the pipeline going through. Uh, so I'm glad I was there to see what was going on. Um, I do know, well, I, I did hear recently that the Army Corps of en Engineers has decided to halt uh, the construction. Um, they want to do a uh, more analysis on, uh, you know, how it's affecting both parties. So that's, you know, somewhat encouraging news um, that they do want to halt it and, you know, review things before it maybe does go through. Maybe they will put it into it. Maybe they will reroute it. It seems very unlikely because as we should know, it's, you know, it's almost completed. It's 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 very close to the river. So um, I can't say I have my hopes up. Um, I do hope that this does have the right result. I, I do hope that it does not get completed. But I you know, it, it's well past time for for good intentions and words. It's well past time for that. We need action. That's what we need. That's what the Native Americans need. That's what the millions of Americans that rely on that water source for their clean drinking water. That's what we need. Action. So whether it's Obama or whether it's the Army Corps of Engineers, whether it's the president-elect Donald Trump, somebody needs to step up and do the right thing and act on Act on the best interest of people, no matter who those people are. Act in the best interest of life, the preservation of sacred tribal lands. Um, just do the right thing.